Okay, well I wanted to make a video uh, to our viewers, our subscribers on YouTube and uh, those of you that watch our videos from our website. It's always good to hear from you and uh, many thanks as always for your emails. Uh, some of you have been asking how we've been doing. Uh, if we plan to recommence our newsletter and uh, we hope to have something uh, back up and running by the autumn. So uh, keep us in your prayers for that. Been a busy summer. Uh, we still get out at least twice a week and uh, also we go to our local train station uh, in a weekday evening to get the rush hour crowd uh, and that's been pretty productive also so we're very busy as always uh, we have different uh, batch of tracks which we like to give out and uh, we still have some Bibles left which we will be distributing over the next few weekends also throughout the summer Patrick's been very busy writing articles on uh, the Third Reich some outstanding work and if you go onto our website and if you go into the infamous and the famous section you'll see about a dozen or so articles which he has written over the last uh, few weeks and months that uh, takes a lot of time up so uh, you might want to read it some interesting stories of how some of these evil men not only uh, were found guilty of their horrendous crimes but how some of them even got saved and uh, we said it before that if these people can get saved then absolutely anybody can get saved there's no excuse why you can't be saved uh, that's where we are uh, as of as of today as of making this video to you uh, keep your emails coming in we get some interesting inquiries we get some interesting people who have some interesting stories to relay to us people are still getting saved uh, although we are living in some pretty dangerous bleak and depressing times people are still getting saved and I know that many of you are pretty fearful, are pretty apprehensive with the current situation on the stock markets around the world. Uh, America has lost her AAA standing. Uh, the UK has been on the brink, <coughs> excuse me, of a double dip recession, but uh, so far that hasn't occurred. And most of Europe is still struggling terribly to bounce back from the near collapse of the Euro and uh, there's no doubt we are living in very uh, unusual, very worrying times. But nonetheless, uh, if you're pre-millennial, if you're pre-tribulational, then you know that Jesus will come back for you. Uh, you were told not to worry. You were told not to look for the Antichrist. You were told to look for the Son of God. Our hope is in Jesus. It's not in a, a religious or political system. It's not in a sports system. It's not in a family or anything else, which may give you a temporary sense of relief. Uh, it may give you uh, a form of security, but uh, ultimately only peace, only true faith, only true uh, satisfaction, uh, and only real substance comes from Jesus Christ and the Word of God. So I just wanted to say that because, as I say, we get emails from people who are pretty concerned, pretty worried, and I know that money is not worth as much as it was, and some people are also investing in gold, and there's swings and roundabouts with going down the gold route. Um, so all I would say is, is not to worry too much, not to fret, and uh, let the Lord carry you. If he can save you, and he has done, if he can guarantee you eternity, and he will do, then I'm pretty sure he can carry you over the next 10 months, or the next 10 years. Um, so I just want to say that, and hopefully if you're watching this video and you're a little worried, a little uh, concerned and just try to relax and uh, go to the Word of God. The psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. And uh, we're told that when we put our mind on Christ we have perfect peace. And I've tried it and it works. So uh, just rest in the Lord. Uh, take his yoke, put it upon yourself. And uh, he says, whoever comes to me, I will know why he's cast out. So just a quick uh, introduction. Uh, a quick presentation and if you're a new subscriber to our channel many thanks for coming along uh, for those of you that don't know us we are a father and son ministry uh, in the UK as you can tell by my accent and uh, we have a heart for the lost we do a lot of street work uh, we got articles we make videos and uh, we do a lot of correspondence as well with people We're pretty diverse pretty busy uh, our main love is evangelism and uh, alongside evangelism, Bible teaching. Sola Scriptura, which if you don't know means the scripture alone. 
this is what is inspired no church is inspired uh, no group of people are inspired only the Word of God is inspired Peter uh, excuse me Paul uh, Paul and Barnabas were two apostles filled with the Holy Spirit and according to the book of Acts they couldn't agree on a pretty important uh, subject and the subject was so great that they separated for a period of time just because uh, two groups of Christians or two denominations don't agree doesn't mean that they are not necessarily biblical uh, there's this false notion that because the Catholic Church is a billion strong I don't think it's as many as that but on paper there's a billion Catholics they still account me as a Roman Catholic because I've never uh, resigned officially from the Church of Rome and I was never excommunicated so there's millions and millions of Catholics who don't go to the Catholic Church who have rejected it who are Bible believing Christians and they are still a 50 counted as a Roman Catholic so don't go by the number game it doesn't work but uh, just because you have millions of Catholics who sometimes go to church and sometimes don't go to church doesn't mean that they have the truth um, if you look into an average pew in a Catholic church you'll see mum dad two children somebody somewhere is practicing birth control and uh, yet the Catholic church is against birth control and yet mum dad have got two children uh, the priest knows that uh, birth control is being practiced within their system but he won't say anything against it Now, this video isn't against or uh, for birth control I'm just simply making a point that uh, you can have a pew you can have a large congregation of Roman Catholics and yet uh, they don't follow their church's teachings feminism is very great uh, in all areas of Christendom quote unquote and yet uh, again the Church of Rome says nothing against it so just wanted to give a couple of points, a couple of thoughts to you. These videos aren't scripted by the way. Um, I'll just speak as I find and hopefully uh, you'll get something from maybe just a section of a video, maybe just a few seconds you'll get something which you hadn't thought of or maybe the Lord will put something uh, into my mind which I'll relate to you. But check everything obviously in light of scripture because uh, uh, only the scripture is inspired, nothing that I say or you say or anybody else says uh, is of any value if it's not substantiated and affirmed in the Word of God. Now, what I want to do this morning is just uh, speak about a few areas of uh, subjects that are of interest to me. Uh, we had an email recently from somebody who was trying to witness to a Catholic bishop and uh, we commend this party for doing so and uh, this bishop was giving the impression that only the Church of Rome can interpret the Bible uh, I've got a couple of scriptures to uh, share with you if you're watching this video and you know who you are um, and if you are an apologist if you're somebody like myself who has a burden for Catholics wants to reach the lost uh, then perhaps this video uh, will be of interest to you but nonetheless what we try and do uh, at Ex-Catholics of Christ is to hold up the Word of God and uh, those that aren't saved will get saved through the evangelism and those that are saved may grow because there is a dearth, an absolute dearth uh, in professing Christendom today of solid biblical teachings and uh, we don't claim to be anything special we're just a couple of self-taught Bible believers uh, but we know that those of you that are Bereans those of you that are faithful Christians will check out what we say and uh, get a blessing from it. Okay, John chapter 20, Jesus is speaking to the apostles, okay, first and foremost. And um, in verse 23, he says, Whosoever sins you remit, they are omitted unto them, and whosoever sins you attain, they are retained. So first and foremost, he's speaking to the apostles. And the Church of Rome will say that only the apostles were given this commission. Now, the problem with that is if only the apostles had this commission, what would happen when the apostles died? Did the commission die with the apostles? It's kind of illogical to think so. Uh, scripture with scripture, something that Martin Luther coined, and it's a very true expression when it comes to understanding the Word of God. And you go to 2 Corinthians 5, 19, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. 
Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech us by you. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. 6.2 Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. So the commission is given first and foremost to the apostles, because they wrote the New Testament, and then vicariously, according to 2 Corinthians 5, it's given to all Christians. All Christians are part of the royal priesthood, according to the Apostle Peter, and that commission is given to all of us. So anybody who is a Bible-believing Christian has the ministry of reconciliation. That means to go into all the world and preach the gospel. It could be with Bible tracts, it could be with signs, it could be just talking one-on-one, -on -one. it could even be just by making a video as simple as this. We all have the authority to do this. Okay, 1 John 1.12 says that we have the power to become the sons of God through the new birth. Okay, so John 20, 2 Corinthians 5 makes it crystal clear that we all have the ministry of reconciliation. Okay, so who comes to the Lord, who believes, who gets saved is down to the Lord. And we don't claim to have the ability to regenerate, that's the Holy Spirit's job, but God uses us as vehicles to preach the gospel. Okay, and I hope uh, that, imp uh, that important point has been of help to you. Faith and works is another subject uh, which gets uh, quoted a lot of the time by people. And uh, James chapter 2 speaks about Rahab the harlot who was saved by her works, not by her faith alone. And again, you need to read the entire book of James to get the context right. Joshua chapter 2 is where we find uh, Rahab. And uh, verse 4, Joshua 2, 4. And the woman took the two men and hid them, and said thus, There came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. Now first of all, she has faith to take the men into her house. Uh, look at 11. Look at the second part of verse 11. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. So her faith produced the works. Yes, she lied, and God doesn't commend her for her lies. Uh, she lied when she told the elders that she didn't know where the men that Joshua had sent were, but she was saved first and foremost by her faith. Ephesians chapter 2, look at uh, verse 10. For we, are his, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So we were saved, according to verse 8, by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we were saved when we believed on the Lord unto good works. Okay, our works reflect the fact that we are saved. Go to 1 Samuel uh, 16, 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. This is a reference to Jesse's sons. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. When a sinner believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, God sees the heart. That's Romans chapter 4. And Paul speaks in Romans chapter 4 about the man that believes in the Lord and his faith is counted to him as righteousness. He gets the garments, he gets Christ's purity, sinlessness uh, accredited to him. So when a sinner believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, God sees the heart first and foremost. You've just seen it in 1 Samuel, which is found ultimately in Romans chapter 4. When a person is saved, they produce works, which is seen in James chapter 2. Okay, so Romans 4, James chapter 2 are very easily reconciled in light of 1 Samuel 16. So one more time, a sinner will believe on the Lord, he will trust the Lord, and the Bible says he passes from death unto life, John 5, 24, and then he will produce good works. Abraham takes Isaac to sacrifice him, and that is seen by the men that go with Abraham to the sacrifice. So when you teach works are needed to be saved, you fall into the trap of a works righteous system. You're saved by your faith in Christ alone. <clears throat> Two things I want to say in 
conjunction to that would be this. When a sinner believes on the Lord Jesus Christ, he gets Christ's imputed righteousness. He is completely covered, as I've already said, with the sinlessness of Christ. The opposite teaching to that is what is called uh, <coughs> infused righteousness. Infused righteousness is a Catholic doctrine which teaches that you start your walk with baptism, which won't save you, and I'll come to that in a minute, and you continue on in the goodness, you continue on doing your good works, which will not work. Baptism does not save you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians 1, 17, For Christ sent me not to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Okay, see, so he wasn't sent to baptize, but to preach the gospel. Go to Galatians, Galatians chapter 3. Uh, my apologies if I'm going a little fast. I've got a lot of ground to cover, and not much time to do it. So you can always pause this video if you need to. Galatians is a wonderful book to read. It completely dismantles any works uh, needed for salvation. And look at verse 1. O foolish Galatians. Pretty powerful. O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you. Look at verse 2. This only would I learn of you. Received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? Again, the works of the law would be the Ten Commandments, doing good deeds, so on and so forth. Are ye so foolish, having begun the Spirit? Are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. No water baptism was even mentioned in there. He's saying quite clearly that you were not made righteous by the deeds of the law, you were made righteous by faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. When a man preaches the Gospel, the recipient hears it, receives it, and is saved. Okay, not sure? Go to Mark Mark 16. Sometimes it's good to go over these subjects, and I've made a lot of videos in the past along these lines, because people are getting saved all the time, and uh, they don't always understand what they're up against. And if you're a young Christian dealing with apologetics, then this video should hopefully be of help to you. Uh, Mark 16, 16, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So you believe, which is what saves you, and then you are baptized. It doesn't say, if you're not baptized, you won't be saved. It says, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Okay, now the Old Testament saints could not be saved by anything that they did. Their sacrifices were simply a temporary covering uh, of their sin. The New Covenant is initiated by the death of the tester, Jesus Christ, and therefore anybody who wants to come to God comes to God through faith in Christ alone. Sola fide. Okay, well I hope those verses have been of some help to you, because a lot of Christians are getting confused on this whole area of faith and works, and uh, if you're not careful you put the saved person back under the law and he strokes she falls into the problem and issue of lordship salvation and i've already spoken about that on other videos so i shan't go over that again but uh, hopefully this video has been of some help to you and as always thank you for your thoughts your prayers your wishes and uh, we will be back shortly to uh, talk to you again okay many blessings and maranatha